everybody. Um, I have been fighting my Hodgkin's lymphoma for the past 13 months now. I have been through 12 treatments of ABVD, one cycle of IGEV, six treatments of Etcetris or the Brituximab or the SGN35, and I am now finally in remission. But now I am on my way to get an autologous stem cell transplant, or also called an auto transplant. It is a stem cell slash bone marrow transplant of my own cells. They were considering doing an allogeneic stem cell transplant on me, which is a stem cell slash bone marrow transplant by using a donor cells. And I have a donor. My brother was a 10 out of 10, 100% match for me, which is fantastic. I couldn't have asked for anything better. But the risks are, are too high. So we are going to try the auto transplant on me. And there's, there's a lot involved. There's a lot involved with this. And I, I kind of have no idea what to expect. I know it's going to be hard. Um, there's a lot of steps involved. So what I plan on doing, I plan on filming as much as I can of this. That way I can show others what I'm going through. And two, it helps others know what to expect when they are going through the same thing that I'm going through. If they're going through an auto transplant and have no idea what to expect, go on YouTube and type auto transplant. I hope my video can come up and they can watch watch it from beginning to end and know what to prepare for, know what to expect. I hope it can be very, very helpful to both me and anybody else that's going through the same battle. I've already gotten multiple tests done for pre-transplant. I have to get a lot of blood work done, a lot of blood work. I had to get 17 vials out of me. I have to get a breathing test done, PFT, EKG, chest x-ray, a MUGA scan, PET scan. Um, CT scan is part of the PET scan, I guess. And also a bone marrow biopsy, which I haven't gotten done yet, so I don't know what that's like. I'm a little freaked out by that one. In two days, I will be admitted into the hospital to start a chemotherapy treatment called ICE, I-C-E. And I will be in the hospital for three to four days receiving that. So that's, so that's my first step. I'll film that. I'll film that and let you know how that goes throughout the process. I'll have my camera and I'll let you know what's going on, how I feel, symptoms, everything about it as much as I can, as much as I can show. They also told me that I'm going to lose my hair again. I finally have about two inches of hair that I've been growing out, but they told me I'm going to lose it again, but you yeah, well. So first thing is first, I'm going to get ready and pack to head to the hospital. I'm getting treated at the University of Penn in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I've heard a lot of great stories about them. The hospital looks magnificent. The people are very nice, so I look forward to staying there. So, uh, yeah, wish me luck, and here we go. Thank going. you. We are on our... to Minehall South Street. We are on our way to Philadelphia right now to start my east, my east, my east, my east. Because <laughs> I was reading signs that said east. <laughs> start my east. My yeah. Bail, bro. <laughs> Watch it. We are on our way to Philadelphia to start my ice chemotherapy treatment. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
again. Huh? No, I'm not a circus. Not I'm not a circus clown, dude. <laughs> what? And here's the parking garage. It ain't a parking garage. Yes, it is. It even says, "Please oh part, please gonna, pardon yeah. our appearance." I do not feel safe in here. Oh. Please geez. pardon our appearance. Oh God. <laughs> I'm patient. That guy's serious business right there. Yeah. No messing around. <laughs> I'll have a number one. <laughs> You want fries with that? Uh, for sure. Ding fries are done, ding fries are done. Oh, Burger Burger King, celebrate. You want fries with that? You want an apple pie with that? Electronic trash can, put your hand in it. Oh. oh, I guess you have to close it. Look, you see yourself. My hat's crooked. Oh. 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 That's my scenery? That's your scenery. Oh, yeah, fuck. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I need, yeah, I need music. Wah, wah, wah. No grass, nothing. Ah, oh, fuck. Just a big metal thing. <laughs> Okay. Is this your first time getting a regimen? Um, I've had a boss of mine before. Oh, right. and the IGEV regimen, not ice. Not ice. Okay. Okay, I'm going to give you a mask. Oh, I'll have to wear this. Yeah, when we, just when we access. I'm going to get you guys both a mask, too. Hold on. Okay. You gotta stop munching your chips. No. <laughs> Help. There you go. <laughs> Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, you felt it. No, it tastes hard. Like. Metal. What was it? Yeah. Is that pepper? No, it's no, just saline. It's saline. saline. Oh. It usually doesn't taste that bad. Yeah. I got here at around 1.30. It is now 5.45 and I still didn't even get started yet. Ready? Okay. Ow. Hold well on. Oh boy. Very quick. Ow. I just had to take a whole bunch of pills of Decadron and Zofran. They're pill form instead of an IV bag. So I hope it works just as well. And I just got stabbed in the stomach. With the a blood thinner and it really hurt so I just got my schedule for the next three days and 
tomorrow looks like it's gonna suck. <laughs> Skyping with my buddy Jeff. Say hi. Hello, Meg. <laughs> is almost actually it is 10 o'clock at night and I finally just started my chemotherapy it is an hour-long infusion of etoposide something like that so they said the anti-nausea drugs will work for 24 hours so I hope the pills were good enough after this, they said that they can unplug me for a little bit so I can get a shower. So I'm a little excited about that. But <clears throat> yeah, here we go. Say hi, mom. Say hi, mom. Yeah. <laughs> you see it creeping. That's weird. What? I don't know. She said say hi, mom, and all I saw was this red light come from the bottom of the screen up like this. My cameras are creeping. Yeah. Skyping with my mommy. Skyping with my kitties. There's Hatikin and there's Felix. He's playing with the tree. Huh? <laughs> He's eating the tree. What? Hey, don't eat the tree. What? <laughs> <Hi. gasps> Tinsy Oh, can I see Gizzard? Gizzard. <laughs> oh, now Conan is on. That's what I have here at the hospital. What? Conan O'Brien is on TV. That's what I have oh, here at the hospital. Favorite. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Wow. Is that a shower patch? Yes, it is. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I didn't even look at it yet. It's very big. <laughs> it feels very big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So I'm just going to put this under your bra strap there. Okay. Sorry. Huh? There you go. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> that should be all right. I gotta get this off in like 20 minutes when I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I can help you. I just finished at about 11 o'clock of the top of, uh, top of side, something like that. It took an hour and now I'm unplugged for a little bit. I got this huge thing on me. I feel like the incredible like <clears throat> Hulk burst out of this thing. <clears throat> But I got this on me so I can go grab a quick shower and then I have to get plugged back in and be pumped with saline for the rest of the night. Every single time I have to pee, which is like every 15 minutes, I have to pee in this little container and measure how much it is each and every single time. And then I have to record it every time I go, how much it is. I'm getting good at guessing how many milliliters is in my urine, is in my bladder, depending on how bad I have to pee. I have to change the dressing because I got it soaked in the shower. For the rest of the night, at least until 5 a.m., and it's now 12.30, I have a big-ass bag of saline going through me. Which means I'm not going to get any sleep because I'm going to be out peeing all night and I have to record all my pees. And then they have to come in every couple minutes and take my blood pressure and temperature. So... Looks like the first night is going to be a sleepless night. Yep, 
It's 2.15 in the morning and I can't sleep. I don't have any television channels in here that I watch. <laughs> I barely have internet that barely works and I can't for some reason watch anything on the computer either. I <laughs> kind of have absolutely nothing to do in here. The food they serve, I don't eat. I don't eat pork loins or beef or fish and I'm just, it's only, it hasn't even been one day and I already feel like I'm kind of going insane. I have like absolutely nothing to do. This isn't what I expected. The people are great. The hospital's really nice and the people are great, but it's just, it's just not what I expected. If I'm already miserable on the first night, how am I going to live in here for a month straight? They're going to have to wheel me down to the mental institution. <sighs> I could never be Amish, dude. Never. <laughs> so, I kind of had a rough night last night. Didn't sleep too well, couldn't sleep. And then, stomach pain, nausea. Never threw up yet, but stomach stomach pain, uneasiness. Um, I didn't eat yet, so I'm afraid to. Food sent right there. From like two hours ago. Um, at 10 a.m. I just got hooked up to my carboplatin? Carboplatin? I don't know. A big giant bag of saline. Which is about my fourth giant bubba bag so far. Every couple hours, I'm taking anti-nausea, compazine. I can't get, I usually get Zofran and Decadron. They give them to me in pills instead of IV, and I guess it worked. I didn't get sick, but I can't get that until every 24 hours. So I can't get that till later today. But every four to six hours, I can take compazine, and that's what I'm working on. But um, <clears throat> If, and these new drugs going in, we don't know how well they're going to do, but if I do start getting sick, they're going to give me new anti-nausea medicines. I just got disapproved for one because it can mix with the iphosphamide that I'm about to get in an hour or so. But they can give me Ativan, which is known to like tranquilize you and knock you out, so that'd be interesting, like you're drugged. Or marijuana tablets, like pure marijuana. So, if things get a little rough uh, today, it should be interesting, but today's going to be a bad day, they said. Once I start getting all the drugs today, later on tonight, it's going to be bad. I'm really, really not looking forward to it. I'm scared, but I have options. I have drugs. Drug drugs. So, we'll see how it goes. So, they gave me an extra bag of Zofran for it to help with the nausea. It took 15 minutes. And I am now on the iphosphamide drip, mixed in with the mesna because the mesna helps with bladder bleeding from this drug. And this is for 12 hours. So, it's now 12.15, so it will be going past midnight. And that's just one bag. After that's done, they do another bag of the exact same thing. So. I'm so bored. I can't even eat this food. I, I don't even know what the, that is. I don't know. I, uh, I'm barely drinking anything. In two days, I had one bottle of water because I'm getting pumped with so much saline, it's ridiculous. But, ugh, that smells horrible. Man. Oh my god. A headache on and off, tired, stomach pain on and off. They're giving me extra anti-nausea drugs like Compazine and Sofran. Sofran. Um, and now, 
I'm just counting down the minutes until I have to get that shot in the stomach again. I am not looking forward to that. They said I could practice it on myself for when I have to do the new position shots, but no. No. <laughs> My husband's watching me get my shot done. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Ow. 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 Medicine stings. Ow. The shot hurt a little bit, but then the this oh, the medicine is stinging. The needle hurts, the injection hurts, the medicine hurts. I am not looking forward to doing this to myself twice a day, every day, if this is how bad it hurts. I'm not going to be able to do it. I now just got hooked up to about three different things. Have the aphosphamide and mesna going until 12.30 in the morning tonight. It's a 12-hour drip out of this afternoon. They just put up the atopicide that I had last night, which made my stomach hurt. And a whole bunch of saline. That's like my sixth bag. It's a whole bunch of whole bunch of lines going through me right now. It is day three. I am very weak, very tired, very fatigued, lethargic. Can't stop laying down. But the nausea's gotten better. But they have me on a potassium drip. My blood pressure keeps going really, really low. But I only have one more drug later this afternoon to do, the top aside again. And then I get to go home. So I just can't wait to go home, <laughs> lay in my own bed. It's been a long ass day. It's almost 8.30 at night and they just started my etoposide. Which will run for one more hour and then I can finally get out of here. I have Alex. Take me home. Hey. Finally get to go home. Okay. I'm back home now. And now I have to inject myself with Nupigen shots. And I don't want to do it. Oh my god. Oh god. Freaking the hell out. From the window. God. Oh, oh my God. All right. Did you swab it? Huh? Did you alcohol swab it? Yes, I, I did. I can't see through here. One, two, three. Okay. All right. I want this push in. I guess it is. I think it's done. I can't push it in anymore. Ah! Good job. You did it. Did it. supposed to swab it down afterwards? Or? With alcohol? With an open hole? I don't know. Do they do that? I, I don't It's know. leaking out a little bit. A little bit's leaking out. It's only a little bit though. Most of it was in. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm all 
set up and getting ready to get my bone marrow biopsy done. And I'm scared shitless. You have three Ativan in you. I know. I have three Ativans and they're not doing crap. I just got done with my bone marrow biopsy and it was torturous. Felt the whole thing. The needles hurt. The lidocaine hurt. Plunging of the thing in my spine hurt. The extracting the marrow hurt. Every single thing hurt so bad. Nothing felt like it was a numb. I felt everything. And now I'm in so much pain. I have been home from the hospital for a little over a week now, about a week and a half. Um, the side effects of the chemo did not kick in until about a week after I was released from the hospital. Severe fatigue, very tired, weak. I had to take a lot of anti-nausea medications, which I never had to do with any other chemo before. Never got sick, but did not feel good in my stomach at all. And really bad constipation that kicked in about a week later. Thanks, Felix. I had to take three full doses of the milk and magnesia, which was horrible. I also have a very bad, huge rash all over me. It's mostly all over my groin, which is very, very irritating, very, very painful. I have it on the back of my knees. I'm also very bruised, and I'm getting eczema breaking out all over my hands and elbows and my face, and I'm just... My body's kind of going crazy. I've gotten used to injecting Neupogen, which is very, very surprising. I've gotten used to it. Lidocaine is the trick. I've been using lidocaine every time. It numbs my skin, and I don't feel the needle go in at all. The medicine kind of stings a little bit, and gets kind of sore, and my stomach looks ridiculous. But the lidocaine helps numb, numb the skin, which is very, very helpful. A few days after I was released from the hospital and doing Neupogen, my counts went very, very high. So I thought, great, the Neupogen's working. Three days later, my blood pressure, I got, like, got very low, I got very pale, I got very tired, I got so much sleep and never felt rested, everything just went shroom, like a week after the hospital, and they checked my counts, and I am now severely, severely low in everything. Even though I'm injecting Neupogen to bring my counts up, the chemo is just knocking me down so hard and just killing everything. My white count is very, very low. It's like 1.5 when just three days prior was 12 point something. My red count is low. My hemoglobins are low. My platelets are low. My potassium is very, very low. I've been in the hospital multiple times this week having to get potassium infusions, and I'm now on about three to four pills a day of potassium. It's been almost a week now after my bone marrow biopsy. I'm still very, very sore from that. Ugh. Tomorrow, I go back to Philly. Actually, in like four hours, I go back to Philly. I'm not going to be able to sleep. I never sleep. I go back to Philly, and I have to get more blood tests done to see where my counts are. Hopefully they went back up with more Neupogen that I've been injecting. Um, they have to do some type of marker testing on my stem cells. I don't know. But they're doing blood tests to see where my blood counts are to get ready for harvesting this week. The following day, if my counts are good, I'm supposed to get the catheter implanted in my neck while I'm awake. And I am really not looking forward to that either. 
Getting the port put in was very painful, and I'm very, very scared of pain with this. I'm not looking forward to it. I'm not looking forward to any of this. At least tomorrow, I think, is just simple blood work. Possibly a platelet infusion, because that may be why I have these blotches all over my skin, from what people have told me online. And take one day at a time. Worry about each day, what I'm doing each day, not future events. <laughs> I'm trying to tell myself that. It's... You always hear that phrase, take one day at a time, but that's the truth. I get myself so panicked and so worried about things that are weeks from now. And I just need to worry about what each day holds. And then freak out when it's actually happening. 